Got him. We got us two on one crankbait. What's up guys? I'm Ryan with Ryan Epps Fishing. Now, on today's video, we got the boat back out on the home pond, Douglas Lake. We're gonna be using these grass right here. We're gonna get out there deep. We're gonna try to find some bass, put them in this boat. So, it's gonna be a good time. Y'all sit back, relax. Hope y'all enjoy today's video. didn't want to. He really didn't want to, but he had to. He couldn't help it. It ain't his fault. It ain't his fault. You seen that big gizzard shad go by? Gotta have it. Joker shit on my shoe. Let's go, baby. Do that. Get your crazy butt in the boat. Let's go, baby. These is younger ones right here. They ain't grown yet. They ain't stayed up all night partying. Ain't wanting to roll this morning. Better fix that hangover though, because we got to go today. Got him. Not a big one. Not a big one. Won't it though? Good Lord. What are you doing? We'll have to put some weight on them bones. We basically right here, we just working a little wind blown point. Oop. Yeah, we got them going now. I ain't no 
big and quit. Ain't no big one. Jerky Jay. Boy, he tore that up. Daddy. Feels like a little fella. Oh, I think we got two now. Yeah, I think we got two. He got heavier. Oh, I think one come off. Yep. There we go. Big and big. And Oh, I got two. I got two. We didn't cut it off. We got us two on one crankbait. One on the front hook, one on the back. They ain't biggins. But that is the first time I've done that. There's number one. And there's number two. I like it. We got bluebird skies, ain't a cloud in the sky. Uh, mid morning, we ain't got no wind whatsoever. Dead calm out here. Uh, on top of that, you know, the water, water clarity is really good. It's, it's pretty clear. It's typical Douglas Lake water clarity. Uh, and these fish, you know, they're feeding. But, you're gonna retie. They feeding, but under these conditions right here, a lot of times to get hit on a moving bait, you gotta trigger a strike. Now, I ain't saying I couldn't throw over there and get bit on a swim bait, because I probably could. But, this technique right here, burning this crankbait, can get that school to fire up. I mean, we are burning that crankbait through there. It is an exhausting technique. Now, the rate of speed that I'm retrieving that crankbait to trigger those fish to react to it, I'm burning it, all right? So, when that crankbait gets there, it's going. I mean, it, it's, in, it's in fourth gear. Nothing, nothing, nothing. All of a sudden, it's in their face, and they just react to it. Got him. Might be a little better. Yeah. He's a little better. Still not what we're looking for. Oh God, we got some catfish slime on there. There you go. You know, giant. They fun.
that's a better one right there. There we go. On the old flutter spoon. Came up there and smacked it. I like it. All right, guys. Let's talk about what worked today. Now, uh, I actually had three schools of fish found. Now, what was weird is each one of those schools was acting just a little bit different, and I had to do a little bit different things to fire each one of them schools up. Um, these weren't gigantic schools. One of them was pretty big. Uh, the other one, the other two were just kind of iffy. Um, you know, no big numbers of fish there. The thing about it is, these big schools that you find, uh, generally you'll have a few quality fish in there, but it seems like, um, you know, the landscape that this lake is right now, those schools of fish, those big schools of fish that you find out deep, they're just a lot of two pound fish, pound and a half, two pound, two and a half pound fish. Um, and then you'll, you'll look up here and there and you'll catch a four or a five. Um, but we didn't find anything of real quality. We found some quantity. Uh, we found some fish that wanted to play. So, you know, for the time of year and, and, and for what it is, I feel pretty good about it. You know, we got to set the hook and, and uh, that's what it's about. You know what I mean? Um, so I would say the star of the show overall was burning a big deep diving crankbait. And uh, the crankbait of choice today, that's a Strike King 10XD. Um, that's a green gizzard shad color. That color right there is and always has been money on this lake. And pretty much any lake uh, with shad in it uh, that's got some pretty decent water clarity, that green gizzard shad right there just flat out gets bit. Now, there's nothing special about this crankbait. Uh, straight out of the box, the only thing that I have done is I have upsized the hooks on there and we switched over to KVD must have uh, triple grips. The, the second school of fish that we were on, they didn't want anything to do with that crankbait, period. Uh, but we could get those fish to fire up on a scrounger. Now, the bait that we're putting on our scrounger, and I'll show you the scrounger here in just a second, but it is a castaic jerky jig. It's a five inch jerky jig. It's just a straight tail fluke style bait. Uh, the color that we got on there is basic as it gets. It's just pearl white. Nothing fancy about it. Uh, but we are taking that jerky J and we're gonna pair that joker up with a scrounger. Now, there's a lot of different scroungers out there. Uh, you can go as far down the rabbit hole as you want uh, when it comes to scroungers. There's a lot of companies out there. Uh, you can get a lot of different actions in terms of changing the bills out, um, the thickness of the bill, <laughs> the shape of the bill. Um, you can really go down a rabbit hole with scroungers. All right, but um, if you're going to get into the scrounger game, I can tell you that a good one to start with is the Picasso. Uh, I've caught quite a few fish on a Picasso uh, Swedish head. Uh, good head. Get you a three quarter ounce to a one ounce. One thing about this bait right here with this bill on it is it's going to get more lift when you're retrieving that bait than a standard swim bait it seems like. So a lot of times if I was throwing a three quarter ounce, I'll opt for that one ounce. Um, if I switch over to a scrounger. Uh, I know there's a lot of companies out there making ounce and a quarter, uh, but for Douglas, a lot of times I'm throwing three quarter ounce to one ounce. We happen to be throwing a three quarter ounce scrounger today. Now, the setup that I'm throwing this on is the exact same setup that you see me throw my hollow belly on. Um, and that setup is a seven foot six Ducket Micro Magic Pro. That's a medium heavy. I've got that paired up with a die with the Tula 150. Uh, and just like my crankbait, I've got this spooled up with 12 pound fluorocarbon. All right. Uh, same exact setup as the swim bait. Uh, don't change anything about it. Cut the swim bait off, tie the scrounger on, and you're good to go. Now, 
why do they sometimes prefer a scrounger over the swim bait? Hell if I know. I got no clue. Um, I don't know. But I can tell you that they do. Uh, it is a different action. It's a totally different action. Um, but, you know, they, they do prefer one over the other sometimes. Um, on this lake... I think that it's it's rare that that happens, but it does happen, um, and it happened uh, it happened today. Uh, that school, uh, that second school that I was on, they wanted nothing to do with a swim bait. They wanted nothing to do with a crank bait. I actually caught a few on the next bait we're fixing to talk about, and then was able to put several of those fish in the boat on the scrounger. So it's something different, something to think about, something else to keep in your boat. Everybody needs more shit in their boat. That's just a fact. Cram as much crap in your boat. That's what we like to do. If that's what makes you happy, do it. Next bait, moving on. We also caught a few fish on this little joker right here. One ounce hair jig. I like a hair jig. I actually enjoy fishing a hair jig. Um, this is a little sleeper offshore. Uh, well, it ain't a sleeper. Everybody that's serious about deep fishing, you're gonna find a couple hair jigs in our boat all the time. Half ounce, three quarter ounce, one ounce. If I had to pick one of those, I'd go one ounce. Uh, kind of the same deal. Uh, we go back to rate of fall uh, and how speed affects bites, how speed it, it triggers bites. Uh, this one ounce hair jig when I'm burning this thing up off the bottom, I'm letting this thing fall on a slack line, all right? So I'm real, 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 picking that uh, jig up off the bottom, and then I'm engaging my spool and letting that thing fall down on a slack line. And uh, so the rate of fall with this one ounce hair jig, when that thing's just nose diving back down, that's a lot of times when your bites happen and uh, it's the same principle as the speed that crankbaits go. And you know, this jig's falling really fast back down through the school, and they just react to it. Um, this is very, very simple, very, very basic stuff right here. All right, you're throwing it out. Usually, what I'll do is I'll throw this bait out. I'll let this joker sink to the bottom. I'll let this bait sink to the bottom, all right? Once I know that it's on the bottom, then all I'm doing is lifting that bait up off the bottom by reeling. You know, I'll give it five, six, seven uh, real quick uh, turns of the reel handle, and then I'm hitting my push bar, and I'm letting that thing fall on a slack line. Once I feel it get back down there, if you got suspended fish, naturally you're gonna have to know the fall rate of this lure so that you can count it down. Um, but most of the time these fish that are set up on the bottom I'm just going to let that thing go down to the bottom as soon as I feel it hit the bottom then it's just a quick oops there's a brush pile out there once I feel that thing hit the bottom then I'm just doing the same thing a few quick reel turns and then feeling as it goes back down that's most of the time when your bites will happen right there when that thing's falling on that slack line now we're in about five foot of water right here, so it don't look like nothing's falling. That's okay, you get the idea. Um, a hair jig is not something that I expect to come out here and catch them on all day long. Is it something you need to keep in your boat? Well, uh, it can put you a few extra fish in the boat. There ain't no doubt about that. Um, it can fire a school up, uh, a pressured school. Um, it's pretty hit or miss, uh, but it is an effective bait and don't be scared of, uh, these bigger hair jigs. I mean, I've caught them on bigger hair jigs than that. Um, yeah, basically you're just imitating a big shad down there. Um, they eat big shad, they'll eat big hair jigs. Don't think you have to go get all finessey with these hair jigs. It's already finesse enough. It's a friggin' hair jig. You know, that was pretty much the stars of the show. Now, we did catch a fish or two on a flutter spoon. 
just a small strike king sexy spoon that's a good flutter spoon especially for somebody on a budget or somebody that's just getting in flutter spoon fishing that's tough flutter spoon it's fishing fishing a flutter spoon get you a strike king sexy spoon throw it out there flutter it you'll catch them i guarantee it now we also caught a few fish on the old standby staple of this boat hollow body swim bait five inch zoom swimmer paired up with a one ounce ledge head lures uh swim bait head all right that's it right there that is money money that's the deal. Put some fish in the boat. No biggins, but we got to set the hook quite a bit. Come out here. We didn't melt. Uh, sunburn is not as bad as it could be. Um, so, that's all I got for y'all today, guys. If you like the videos, make sure you go hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit that notification bell. It's going to let you all know when I put out all my new videos. If you got any questions or comments, feel free to leave those in the comment section down below. I will get back to y'all with any answers I can give you. Until next time, y'all make some time. Get out there on the water and catch you a few.